Welcome to analyzing a binary variable. The step where we have a look at the effect size and in this particular case Cohen's H2. The example I've been using for analyzing a binary variable uh, was where uh, people only selected between male and female. Uh, it was an older survey and um, 12 people opted for female, 34 for male. Uh, so that roughly translates to 26% female and 74% male. Um, I have a separate video on how you can create these kind of frequency tables with some uh, some different software tools. Um, we also already did a video on how you can do a test if those percentages are actually significantly different from each other. And uh, that was an exact binomial test. I have separate videos on that. And that turned out to be significant with a p-value of 0.002. And usually below 0 0.05 um, would be considered significant. Um, in this video, we're going to have a look at um, is that considered a big difference or not? And um, uh, one of those measures that can do that is Cohen's H. So there are a few different effect sizes that can be actually used. Uh, Rosnow and Rosenthal, they report that you can use Cohen's G, Cohen's H, and a newer index, capital Pi. And um, if you look online, there's also um, a so-called alternative uh, ratio. Cohen's G, a separate video on that, is simply actually the difference with 0.5, so the percentage minus 0.5. Cohen's H, um, is actually uh, can also be used if the expected proportion is different from 0 0.5 and is very often used if it's uh, about so-called paired samples. Um, there's also something known as alternative ratio, also known as relative risk, although that's usually for a uh, two by two table. Um, it's mentioned on uh, Stack Exchange actually, and uh, the PASS sample size software from NCSS uses that as an effect size measure, and there they call it alternative ratio. Uh, I'll have separate videos on those, but uh, the focus for this video is on Cohen's H. So Cohen's H is named after Jacob Cohen, and he wrote um, this among uh, other articles, but I think this is one of the older ones, Statistical Power Analysis for the Behavioral Sciences, uh, the second edition. And on page 202, we there find that H2. H itself is actually used for the paired samples. Um, and in this case, we have a non-paired sample, so one sample actually. Um, as you might notice, phi is actually the arc sign transformation of P1 or the expected counts. And um, that means actually both of them uh, get the uh, arc sign and then you actually uh, the square root out of them and then you actually multiply them with two. Um, the reason for that arc sign transformation, because it's a non-linear so-called transformation, is if you would simply look, only look at the difference of those proportions, the observed one and the expected one, um, the power actually, as they call it, might not be the same uh, everywhere. If you're really interested in more about that, uh, you can have a look in the book, uh, page 180 and 181. One advantage of um, Jacob Cohen's his, um, effect sizes is that he often gives thresholds for when it can be considered small, medium, and large, with a warning that you should actually look into what the standards are in your field, etc. But it's useful if somebody at least gives you a first indication. Now, if you look carefully, you might notice that um, there's H2 there, and these are H. And like I mentioned earlier, they're not the same. Uh, luckily, he gives on page 203 a transformation, which is simply you take your h2 and you multiply that with the square root of 2. Um, so uh, if you have an h value, you simp h2 value, you multiply it with the square root of 2, and then you compare it to these three. Now, I would think that as small is starting at uh, point 20, so anything below that is probably negligible. Um, uh, between 0.2 and 0.5 is small, medium, or large. Now you could, of course, go over the formulas if you wanted to. Uh, I have the formula on my website, peterstatistics.com. Um, but if you want, I also have separate videos on uh, how to obtain this measure with SPSS. 
uh, it's a little bit tricky actually with SPSS to do. Um, with Excel or with uh, R or with uh, Python. And as you might notice, uh, all of them give the exact same result. Uh, the negative sign is depending on if you use the, well, in this case, the male proportion or the female proportion. Um, and then you just get the difference with a negative sign there. Uh, I have separate videos for each of those available. This video is more about uh, uh, once you have obtained it, what do you do with it? So once I have actually obtained Cohen's H2, and the example was about 0.5, just below it, then I first need to convert it to Cohen's H. So I use that formula. So I simply multiply it with the square root of two. That gives me about 0.70. And then I can look that up in uh, the table. In this case, that will fall somewhere between 0.5 and 0.8. So it can be classified as medium. So I could add that to the result. Uh, so we already had uh, the binomial test results. And then we simply add to that Cohen's H suggests that the difference can be classified as medium. Uh, H2 was 0.5. I usually round it to two decimal places. All right, and that was uh, it, I think, for Cohen's H2. Uh, hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.